We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and showing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that America's wealthiest 10% is responsible for 40% of US greenhouse gas emissions. They never asked for this. Swollen seas, faded lands, gasping breaths. Tiny footprints washed away by distant, heavy strides. Counting houses tally yields from afar. Spinning gold from smoke, their ledgers hold no columns for the loss. Coastlines sunk beneath the waves. Generations fleeing broken homes and barren fields. Now the planet itself comes to collect. A storm of compound interest on bills too long unpaid. Time to balance the books. Let the ledger reflect the real debts owed. This poem is inspired by recent research published in the journal PLOS Climate, which has found that taxing investments of the wealthy could fund climate action and promote climate justice. The climate crisis is one of the biggest challenges facing the world today, but its impacts are not felt equally. The world's poorest communities tend to suffer the most, despite having contributed the least to global emissions. To avoid the worst impacts of climate change, countries urgently need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in a way that is fair and just for all. This means not only cutting emissions, but also helping vulnerable communities adapt to the changes already happening. Unfortunately, current government plans are not enough to limit global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius, the target set by many climate scientists. In this new study, researchers found that emissions inequality in the United States cuts across economic and racial lines. The richest 10% of US households were linked to 40% of the country's total emissions in 2019. And for the top 1% of households, whose income is connected to 15-17% to of all emissions, Their investment holdings, i.e. investments in assets such as stocks and properties that generate passive income, accounted for 38-43% to of their emissions. This study suggests that targeting investments in shareholder income with a carbon tax rather than just consumer purchases could be a fairer way to encourage businesses and investors to cut emissions. The money raised could also help fund climate action in vulnerable communities. This research further highlights how more action is needed to create a truly just and equitable future for everyone on the planet. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. They never asked for this. Swollen seas, faded lands, gasping breaths. Tiny footprints washed away by distant heavy strides. Counting houses tally yields from afar, spinning gold from smoke. Their ledgers hold no columns for the lost. Coastlines sunk beneath the waves, generations fleeing broken homes and barren fields. Now the planet itself comes to collect. A storm of compound interest on bills too long unpaid. Time to balance the books. Let the ledger reflect the real debts owed. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Vespers, Once I Believed in You, by Louise Gluck. Louise Gluck is an American poet and essayist who rose to prominence in the late 1900s for her impactful and introspective lyric poetry. Born in New York City in 1943, Gluck was always drawn to poetry and published her first collection, Firstborn, in 1968. 
Her poems explore themes of family relationships, death, nature, and personal identity, with a spare, haunting, and emotionally raw style. Major collections include The Triumph of Achilles, published in 1985, which won the National Book Critics Circle Award, and Averno, published in 2006, a finalist for the National Book Award. Gluck has received numerous accolades, including the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1993 for her book The Wild Iris, and a Nobel Prize in Literature in 2020. Her incisive voice and masterful command of imagery cement her status as one of the most important American poets of the contemporary era. Vespers, Once I Believed in You, by Louise Gluck. Once I believed in you, I planted a fig tree here in Vermont country. Of no summer, it was a test. If the tree lived, it would mean you existed. By this logic, you do not exist. Or you exist exclusively in warmer climates, in fervent Sicily and Mexico and California, where are grown the unimaginable apricot and fragile peach. Perhaps they see your face in Sicily. Here we barely see the hem of your garment. I have to discipline myself to share with John and no other tomato crop. If there is justice in some other world, those like myself whom nature forces into lives of abstinence should get the lion's share of all things, all objects of hunger, greed being praise of you. And no one praises more intensely than I, with more painfully checked desire, or more deserves to sit at your right hand, if it exists, partaking of the perishable, the immortal thing, which does not travel. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.